Hello, welcome to our 50 Question Fridays webinars for May 1st, 2020. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm not quite uh, ready to go yet. I had to spend the past three minutes laying out on the ground, um, just getting grounded I in a, in a whole different way. Um, my sister Brenda had to do some work with me here earlier this week because um, I just could not get it together. It was, and, and she's finding this, and I've seen this too now that she's shown it to me, is like there's all this electromagnetic energy. It's, it's like an electricity that is in our bodies, in our fields, um, and it's just so chaotic right now. Um, and the only thing that I could do that Brenda had me do was go out, lay on the grass five minutes and it did the, the, the clearing of a lot of that electro electromagnetic electric energy within me, with, within my body, within my immediate field and it harmonized it. Um, and so there seems to be a lot of this going on at the moment of, of chaos of in not outside world chaos. I'm talking about the internal chaos, the lifetimes of chaos. Um, just so much is going on with, with each of us and we're all experiencing it in an ind individual way. Um, so for me having to lay on the earth, that is, what assists me so i just wanted uh you know to share that with you guys too and just checking out and saying hello to everybody here today um got people from everywhere and glad you guys all made it um so we will come back to some of the questions from emails here in a bit We'll start here with um, with the questions that you guys have sent in already. Actually, we're going to start by going into the heart space with everybody. So I would like to invite you all to just take the three breaths with me to move your consciousness from here back into the physical heart where we began, where we began this life. So it's simple, easy. It's just putting your awareness onto your physical heart. And you can close your eyes if you wish. Just imagine that light of the earth, the heart of the earth, and just breathing in, imagine breathing in that energy. The energy of the earth up through your feet, through your body, and to your heart. Next, imagine connecting to your soul, to creation energy, source, God, central sun, however you see that and breathing in that unconditional loving energy into the heart as well. And then breathing in both those energies, both from earth and from sky, breathing those both together within the heart at once, mixing them together, expanding them out, becoming that column of light. That moves you from the head into the heart. You are energetically grounded. You are energetically connected. So that Trinity breath to go into the heart space is really a huge thing in this time too. Um, let's see. So here we are starting with our questions. Um, first question, Ethan. Hey, Ethan. I ordered the golden fire and light rods. I keep feeling to work with them in combination with the wands and the wings of talk. Do you have any input or advice that can help me with this? So the golden fire and light rods are, you know, they're the dowsing rods, um, which, you know, we teach that you only need one of those single dowsing rods to, to use them as a dowsing rod. Now, um, to use them in conjunction with the wands, basically those those rods, the dowsing rod, the golden fire and light rod is the wand. It is that energetic. So everything that you can do with that golden fire and light wand, you can do with the golden fire and light rod. It's they're They're exactly the same energetic template. Um, and then working. So the question too was, can you working with them in combination with the wings of talk oh, and the other wands? So that really is kind of, 
boils down to how you are personally guided when you start working with, you know, several different tools all together is, um, you know, it was one of those things that always we were told not to create, um, you know, booklets or, or to give, you know, exactly what the tools do because we didn't want to limit them or put them in a box. So the tools also are very intuitive for people. So, you know, sorry, I, I don't have personal experience with that one, Ethan, how to use those three tools together. But I know that you are a very connected individual. And so I would love for you to share with us sometime what it is that you find with using those three tools together. And, and that's the beautiful thing with all these tools, everybody, is just play with them. Um, using the certain different combinations is what created the activator one day was there were several people who took the different parts, a generator, a ring, a headache, a coil, and everybody started to assemble them into that form of the activator. And that is how that was, was birthed is, is the, the pl different people playing with the combinations of the tools. Um, so all the tools work together very well. Uh, Jill asks, would the rings or wands erase a tachyonized crystal if the two are too close together? Um, so with crystals that are programmed, now basically it is up to the crystal mostly what it holds on to and what is released. So when you're in a tensor field, you put a ring that crystal that's been programmed into a ring, it will either amplify the things that the crystal it finds beneficial or else it will clear them. So you can ask the crystal, you know, to, to hold on to those tachyonized um, energies and information. So that really does become um, between you, the crystal, and the energetics on what it what is held there. So it's, it's just working with the consciousness of the crystal. Um, but otherwise, the tensor rings and crystals work very well together because they will clear what is not in the highest and best to be held within that crystal. So like you get the Lemurian crystals that have the programming etched into them, it will not clear the programming that's etched into the crystals. Um, you know, those different records, the record keeper crystals, even though record keeper crystals we're seeing are changing themselves on their own right now. Anyway, um, another rabbit hole. Um, let's see. Another question here. Can you add an intention at opening your first eye using the golden heart generator? So the golden fire generator. Um, yes, there. Even though, you know, I've talked about how you can't place the intentions and amplify the intentions in golden fire generators, that you can only do that like in the harmony generators and the 222. What that is, is the harmony generators will take our human based intentions that the intentions that come from here and it will hold and amplify those. The golden fire generators don't necessarily align always with our human based intentions because the golden fire generators are connected to our higher soul. That is the intentions that it will hold and amplify is, is it is the soul based intentions. But with that said, totally with the golden fire generators, you have the own intent that you are putting into your field for opening your third eye. And you can use that generator to assist in doing that. Um, we actually have a, an older video about um, activating the pineal gland with these tools. So please do check out our um, our YouTube channel that we do have a pineal activation one from several years ago. Um, and then also, you guys, check out our new resources page at TwistedSage.com. I'm really excited about that. Amber, my niece, who, who works here full time, too. Um, she spent a lot of time on that page getting getting things organized, and then I've spent the past week going through content. So um, we, we do have that resources page that has a lot of great things on there, as well as the links to the YouTubes. Um, let's see. A question from Jill. Parcel has been at the same UPS location for a while. Okay. 
So there is been there has been some issues with international deliveries um, through USPS, and they end up sitting in Chicago um, because the the tracking shows that they get to the the international shipping place. And I don't know if they're just bogged down or what, but USPS has been having some issues with international deliveries. So that's why for international, um, we always we have on the website, on the web store, uh, two different options you can choose. One is first class, which is a lot cheaper. The other is priority. Priority mail actually has the best tracking and it ensures your package. So for international, we always suggest using the, the priority shipping just because it tracks them a lot easier. Um, so we are working with USPS on the issues with, with some of these international orders getting stuck right now. And I know that as soon as things open back up again, things are going to flow. But uh, please do write the business manager if you wish. It is bbesco at twistedsage.com. And um, and we'll just make sure that we put in a note to USPS. Uh, golden Fire Generator, got Golden Fire Gaia has an extra feature compared to the Golden Fire Tensor Ring. It also connects Sacred Heart. Is there a difference between Regeneration Gaia and the Regeneration Generator? Can you talk about Regeneration Tensor Generator? Yes. Do I have a Regeneration Tensor Generator? I do not. Okay. The, the tensor field generators of the regeneration ring are simply, when we, when we made the first one, they're simply just a ball of light. When I made that first one, that's all I could see was just a bright light. And that bright light just expands out. Now, with the regeneration tensor field generator, you know, we did the asking, like, you know, how far out does this cover, things like that. It, it's not working within this third density matrix like that on how far it expands but it is how wide and how broad through the dimensional through the dimensions through the frequencies that that generator expands the the regeneration so the regeneration um, of course all the regeneration tools don't have all of the um, you know all the etheric templates the downloads of the frequencies and properties of crystals and minerals and all the stuff that all the other tools have the regeneration rings that create the regeneration generator are just clean, clear, connecting to that higher space. And so it's just a bright field those generators are. Now, when we put that into the Gaia sphere, um, and again, we have the four rings that make a generator, a tensor field generator, in the six rings interwoven that make the Gaia spheres. With the regeneration Gaia sphere, these guys are the ones that are truly the magical ones and they are way different than the generators in that they are doing a connecting they're doing a connecting with our higher self they're doing a connecting with that higher light um, you know just those creator frequencies of light that are out there beyond duality into those fields of neutrality and when we're dealing with those higher lights they're they're um They're, they're untouchable by dense stuff. I mean, these higher lights are, they're clean. They're, they're pure light. Um, so when we're bringing in all those higher lights and our soul's light in with it, these um, regeneration Gaia spheres are then connecting into the heart and grounding that into the heart of Gaia and expanding that. So the regeneration Gaia spheres are a lot different than the regeneration generators. Um, all right, what is the most calming grounding ring that you know of? It depends on what level of chaos you're in, I guess. It depends on what it is that needs cleared. Um, so for simple calming grounding rings, um, you know, any of the tools that we have that you would wear or hold over the heart are going to be grounding they're going to be calming in a certain way um, because it's going to be an individual thing on the calming because, you know, all the chaos that we have around and internal needs to come up to be cleared. So as far as like a tool, 
the golden fire coil comes to mind and maybe that's just for you to be the most calming and grounding um tool and because it is going to be individually specific so jill i would say you know that golden fire coil presents as one of the more calming grounding tools for you at this moment um Let's see, and then a question about megahertz of rings. Could a 333 megahertz ring? Oh, so somebody was just asking about uh, qubit measures of rings, like uh, let's say we have the 333 megahertz ring, and this is actually a quarter qubit of that. And if you made the half qubit and the full qubit, if they would change frequencies, no, they do not. Every fractal of the specific qubit measure, again, this is a fraction of that 333 megahertz qubit measure. So any fraction of this qubit, whether they are wholes or halves or quarters, are going to create the exact same field and frequency as the full one. Um, now the question, if you see an entity, is there a way to be sure of who, what it really is as, a, as being non-physical? So the question about if you see an entity, is there a way to be sure of who, what it really is as being non-physical? Sure, they can change their appearance. So what we refer to as entities is simply a being who is not incarnated into the physical um, and entity attachments to people can be either the ones that are a soul contract where they are very much within and a part of the person that we can clear and release, or else they can be something that is outside of your field that is attached. So um, dealing with those entity attachments, that's a whole nother rabbit hole too that we could talk about for days. Um, basically, if you, if you look into a person's left eye, you will see their soul, or you, you, could, you can see their soul through the left eye. But for me, when I look into a person's left eye, and I can oftentimes see somebody that is standing between their soul and them. And for me, that's how I recognize whether um, I'm speaking to the person's soul or somebody else. Um, what is the field of influence for the 8.5 cosmic sun disk? If placed in the pyramid, does it matter if it's on the side instead of laying flat? And what's the field of influence of the mini pyramid? So the question about the, the sun disk, um, the field of influence, it's about the size of a room is, is how large that sun disk's field is. And when you use it with the, the pyramid or by itself, it doesn't matter how you position that tool, whether it is up or laying flat. Um, it really does not matter how that is position, positioned to create that field. And as far as how big of a field the mini pyramid creates, it is about the size of a home, but it can expand. And again, when we're starting to work with these higher quantum tools, it's it expands as we need it throughout our immediate environment. So most of the time, the mini pyramid will be the size of your home, but it can expand out farther if needed. A question here, um, what would be the best crystal combination for grounding using the golden fire generator? Again, that's gonna be person specific. There are a lot of crystals out there that are, that are very grounding. Um, so one, I would just, you know, look it up on, on the internet to find out grounding crystals and then sit with the one and see which one resonates the most with you. Then whenever you put anything inside of the golden fire generator, the two will still amplify themselves. Um, if we fix the ends of any cubit measure tensor ring with a single copper wire, would it be as good as welding? So again we're going to um try to avoid most of the questions on tool construction though i can answer the question you know that if if you bring the ends of your rings together all they have to be is touching it doesn't matter how they are held together when we first started making tensor rings i was using a propane torch and and solder 
and they just don't hold up. So we use a bronze brazing, which is actually, it's, it's between soldering and welding, but it's basically sealing, it, it's basically melting the ends of the copper together and melting them with the bronze so that it all becomes one single solid piece. So that's why we have a lifetime guarantee on all of our, the welds of our tools is because yeah, they, they hold up very well. Um, let's see, I'm going to start saving for the cosmic sun disc. Also wanting to upgrade to the silver regeneration. Just wondering if you could please have a look and see which I need first, this sun disc or the silver blue light ring. Oh, Christopher, totally go with that silver ring. The, um, the silver regeneration ring that, uh, that we use inside of the infinite light pendant. This silver ring itself is one of the, one of the highest, cleanest energy of tools that we've ever felt. Um, this silver ring by itself is amazing. Um, yeah, so that's what I would suggest first. Though that is a tough call because the, um, the Cosmic Sun Disc is a phenomenal tool and it does some major openings, but yeah, that silver ring I feel would be best for you, Christopher. Um, yesterday I was driving with my Golden Fire Sphere and was wondering how quickly does it work? As it is as quick as a drive-by instance or would it need to be stationary for a little time? Maybe it would depend on what state a person is, but for a wayward, it would be immediate question mark. So the question about having um, your golden fire generator and especially in your car and how fast it works with people in the field and it'll work immediately with people that come into the field, but the huge shifts might not occur immediately. For some people, the huge shifts do occur immediately. The cleaning, clearing, connecting, activating of the sacred heart, all that can take place in an instant. Um, and again, yes, it is between the soul and the human on what occurs when anybody comes within the field of these tools. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's, that's why they are smart tools because they are working with the, the person's higher soul self. Um, and then the question was asked about a wayward or a ghost who comes into the field. Again, most, most non-incarnate beings, ghosts, waywards, entities, when they come into this field and anybody incarnate, any human that comes into this field too, no matter who they are, it is connecting to that higher soul spark, that higher divinity of who they are. So again, if it is a ghost and they come into this field, their soul comes in and connects with them. And most of the time, the soul will take that, that person across, um, that ghost or that wayward. So an interview with Slim, he, he used a tensor ring in a bathtub and he got a great detox effect. Do you have any suggestions on what tools would be best for this application or any experience doing so? <clears throat> yes, actually, I totally suggest the five and a half inch golden fire generator. That golden fire generator is one that I take if I ever go to any hot springs. I always take that generator with me. If I am having crazy transformation things going on in my body and I need a hot bath with Epsom salt, always have the golden fire generator in there with me. Um, so the golden fire generator is the one tool that I feel the most strongly about with using with water, with pools, with, um, you know, working with that transformation. Um, so yes, the golden fire generator for sure. And, and I do prefer the five and a half inch one. Um, is there a positive effect of golden fire generator to ionizing radiation? That's a little bit out of my scientific league. Um, so there is a lot of studies done on the ions that are created from the tensor fields. Um, and what, the tensor rings do to radiation, what they do, I cannot tell you. All I can tell you is that they make the radiation from this beneficial. Um, that's, that's what we know. How it does that, it, it makes, it brings a coherency 
to that field because the electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetics, again, are not innately harmful. Um, our heart is that huge electromagnetic generator. This is an electromagnetic universe. But when you have some harmful forms of electromagnetics, what the tensor fields are doing is they are bringing a coherency to them. It's harmonizing those fields, kind of like the work that we do with, with these higher fields of um, like the field of neutrality and doing that work with that harmony and universal peace is that it is changing the energetics of everything. Um, so I don't have the, the, the science-based answer on that. Um, we do have some cool new stuff that we posted on our resources website though. There is a, um, a little scientific data page on there that you guys might find interesting. Uh, and Glendy asks, how do you use the shaman's wand? So the shaman's wand, you know, I carry mine in my field all the time, but how I use it. So let's say um, I want to work with, um, let's say I'm going to work with somebody. I'm going to work with my neighbor's cat. I just picture the cat being here, distance, and I just move the wand. And I just imagine that the cat is right here. It's just an intention and imagination and being in the heart. And so as you are wanding, moving the wand in a circular fashion or figure eights, doesn't matter clockwise, counterclockwise. I just always make clockwise circles. You just follow your intuition with that. Um, so basically we're just creating that field around whatever it is that we're working on. You do that for two minutes with a soft intention, you try not to direct the energy. You try not to be like, okay, I got to fix this. This is bad. You know, you just jump into the heart space, step back, create the field, do that for two minutes at the most and let it go. Um, that's how I've seen, you know, I had my own herniated stomach, that hiatal hernia that I dealt with for years. And that is how I cleared that with shaman's wand was I just laid down. I was like, well, I'm just going to put a bubble around this, made the bubble. Two minutes later, I got up and it was gone. And when I looked for it, it was not even in existence. Um, that's what these new higher fields are doing, like with the shaman's wand, with the dragon's wand, with the harmonic creation field trio. Um, just all the regeneration rings are helping to clear realities. Um, then Ronald asks, can I put my one inch harmony ring inside the infinite light pendant? Will it enhance the energy of the infinite light pendant? Um, yeah, totally. And, and, and again, you can stack and utilize these tools together in all different ways. Um, for me adding, pardon me. For me, uh, well, and for my sister too, she likes to take the gateway pendant and add the infinite light pendant. Um, you know, so yes, totally use your guidance and what feels good to you by adding the tools together. Hi, Malit. Uh, Malit asks, if I use my wand on Organite during its cure phase, can will it infuse the energetics of the wand into the piece? Um, so, when you're working with with a liquid substance you know like with resins um or water or oils especially um you can put a high spin rate to those liquid molecules especially oil oils of all flavors and varieties will will accept that high spin rate and and they will be energized potentized so when you're doing that with organite when you're doing that with the resins um it does feel and present to me, Malit, that when you are wanding it, and whether it's with your light wand or your or your um, fairy wand or whichever, the shaman's wand, and I'd say the golden light wand is the one that feels best to me just looking at it, is that when you are wanding that, when that resin is solidifying and curing, that yes, to me, it looks like it is just brighter and shinier when, when that comes out. Um, that's That's how it presents to me. Um, Jill asks, is the golden fire and light wand 
all in one loop of energy like rings positive and negative ends joined or two open ends like a straight line polarity. Some say that with open ends such as the AccuVac coil, one end is like the vacuum so you need to close up energy of the area it's worn next to afterwards. So there's, there's a couple of questions in with that question. Um, one of them is in regards to the AccuVac that Slim made. Um, which is made with a single piece of wire in a coil and that creates a one-way flow of energy So when we created the coils, we actually, you know, Slim guided me on this to spit to create them with a With a measurement that we were going to make a ring out of but instead of just joining the ends in a ring We fashion them around and then join the ends and so this is still a ring but it is just fashioned in a different physical form. Now, when you have the twisted wire, it is creating the, the true torus. It is creating a flow one way, and it is creating a flow the other way, and they come back onto each other. So this type of tensor coil is creating a closed flow. It is creating a torus. Now, if you have the AccuVac, it is creating a one-way flow of energy. Um, one draws energy and one pushes energy. Um, so then the question two was about a, let me see if I have a wand here. You know, I don't have a golden fire and light wand here, which is surprising because usually I have several of them laying around. A golden fire and light wand is a brass wand. It is just a straight line measurement cut to that very specific measurement. So within the cubit measures that we use, these sacred measures, you can use some of these sacred measures will create a tensor ring. When you cut that length of twisted wire, you bring the ends back together, you create a closed loop coil. And within this closed loop, this is the tensor ring. And that measurement will create a tensor ring. Some measurements can only be used in a straight line frequency, something that you cut in, in, in a length. Because again, as you have copper or you have brass or you have a piece of wood, they all have a one-way flow of energy within them, that piezoelectric flow of energy. So the golden fire and light wand is anchored into that very specific cubit measure of that brass rod where the rings are different. They're the closed-end coils. So they can work in both ways. Now, there are people out there who will make a twisted rod and then they just, that's it. They can create a field, but it's more looks like that field if you twist a length of wire and you don't bring the ends back together to meet. To me, they just look like a, a fuzzy energy down along that rod there. They don't produce a larger field. Um, Hello, Brian. Have you made a tensor ring with gold or platinum? And thanks for creating the silver torus pendant. Samson, I'm glad you got that silver torus pendant. And he says, holy wow, it is amazing. Um, we've been guided to create that regeneration ring in gold. I mean, that's that's what um, that's what one of the guides said, talk. He's like, well, you think the silver is phenomenal. Wait till you try it in gold. And so we do want to start playing with gold here one of these days. Um, and, and that will happen. And as far as platinum, no, never been drawn to platinum at this time. Um, no, it doesn't feel right yet. Um, will the golden fire and light wand do the same as the golden fire coil? Um, no, the, actually the golden fire and light wand, can, I'm sorry, it would be a brass wand. Um, is totally different than the coil. They they run energies differently. They have a different whole energetic connection to them. Um, they're 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 apples and oranges. Those two. Um, can the sun disk field expand with intention? Yes, it certainly can, um, Christopher. So, the the idea that this golden fire generator creates a field innately about seven eighths of a mile across. When we hold our attention with this onto this field, 
we can expand this field indefinitely for as long as our attention is onto it. And that is the same with any of the tools is that when we interact with them in our light and we're in the heart space, we can expand those fields indefinitely. Uh, the question, do the generators help reduce environmental pollution and how? So when Slim Sperling and, and friends were doing um, big studies, they did them like in Denver is the most well-known one, then they did some stuff in Cairo. But in Denver, what they did was they used what they call the harmonizer, which is kind of like a tensor field generator in a way. Um, the harmonizer, they would put frequencies into, and that would expand and is, act as a carrier wave, just as the generator does when you put sound, crystals, light, whatever within these fields, these fields act as a carrier wave for that. So Slim and Friends were using um, the frequencies of rain clouds is what they came up with to put inside of the generators or the, the spheres and it would expand that out. And for them, they did studies in Denver for clearing air pollution. Now, how that does that, it's, it's all frequency, it's intent, I mean, I've seen a 12 year old girl who can move clouds. I mean, there, there are things that we can do with intent and that higher connection um, that affects the physical. Um, I guess I would suggest checking out, because um, I don't have an answer of how, I can't tell you that the molecules do this and this and this occurs, but I would suggest checking out the new science of rain by Dwayne Gardner. Um, for this answer on helping to reduce environmental pollution. So Dwayne Gardner, he um, organized Austin, if you know him as that name, he did a study with the generators putting sound frequencies into them. And he did a study around the Austin area and he showed how he changed weather patterns, cleared the skies, everything else. So the new science of rain book, and you might find an answer there. Uh, and question, do you still make tensors wrap tensor wrapped crystals no for a little while you know we made chakra coils where we actually placed all the chakra stones inside of a coil and we handmade the beads and you know that's we were just starting out and just kind of hand making a few tools at a time so no we don't actually do the the wrapped crystals now, I would recommend, let's see if I have some of his tools here, which I know I do. Um, these guys, Scott Miller with, um, and you can look him up on the Crystal Hotel. So on the Crystal Hotel, Scott Miller, he does all kinds of fun stuff with tensor rings and crystals. Beautiful piece there. Um, so yeah, I would check out the crystal hotel. He's on Etsy and, um, that's, you know, that's the one person that I know that is, that is currently wrapping, um, crystals with tensor rings and just curious, does all the silver tools carry a blue bean in them? And how about the copper tools besides the magnetic energy? Um, so the silver tools are it's not that any of these tools are carrying a specific being through with them, except for the wings of talk. The wings of talk, um, the wings of talk hold space for those blue plasma beings that are masters. They come from that space of neutrality beyond this universe of duality. So they come here in, in a whole different, higher way to, to actually be of assistance. Um, so those specific blue beans, yes, they come through the wings of talk. Now, as far as the silver tools, no, they, it's not that those beans come through them, but that space that they come from, that space of neutrality, it is, it is just a, a space out of duality out of this universe and so these silver rings are creating like a blue light and within that blue light you just have easier access 
to connect with these these beings if you wish um, and again all of our tools are they have that safety mechanism in them in that it is always the soul that is in charge of everything that comes through these tools so if your soul says no you know we're not going to work with talk or any of those beings you can have this and they won't be there um, you know so it's we're just creating spaces that are more easily connectable to those specific beings um, and how about the copper tools besides the magnetic energy so the copper tools the copper tools like the golden fire rings the harmony rings there is a lot of consciousness in here there's the consciousness of electricity the consciousness of copper of all of the earth elementals of all the frequencies and properties and consciousness of the crystal kingdom the plant kingdom the mineral kingdom the different rays of light um, so there is a lot that is accessible within these rings um, so any of the golden fire rings that we have whether they are silver or copper they hold a field where you can access the consciousness of all those plant crystal mineral kingdoms all of that stuff within these but again you have to consciously bring those through so like if you're working with water you can ask for a certain frequency and property of a plant to come into your water or if you're doing healing work and you know of a specific crystal like you say you you know that it is a certain crystal that you want to use for grounding you can ask that that comes through this ring and you receive the frequencies and properties of that specific crystal that you are intending to bring through um, question from Jill so if you encounter an angel for example how to be sure it is not something evil in disguise be in your heart space is where all discernment takes place um, it's just being in the heart space so in trusting your intuition so if you if you're in your heart space here you've taken the breaths you've gone there then trust your discernment if you're pulled out of the heart space when you interact with this person then don't interact with them that is a form of discernment um, so usually if it is if it if you're working with any beings and you're in your heart space you usually will not connect with them in the first place because this is like a frequency a field so when we go in the sacred space of the heart we connect with all of those within that bandwidth when we are channeling or connecting to beings or whatever and we're here and we're being influenced by emotions and beliefs and programs and other energetic attachments that is the energetic field that we are going to be attracting and having our awareness at so whatever we do if we be in the heart space we have more likelihood of connecting to any consciousness that is within that field um, let's see if you have both the Gaia sphere and the wings of talk and a few other tools all are activated at once and let's say an entity steps in which field are they falling into so when you have a, a multitude of tools basically they they all create a larger field and it is just intermixed it's it's an intermixed field of everything um, that the tools create all together so um, when you start adding in you know like the harmonic creation field trio which would be these three specific frequencies they just all harmonize and work together all different frequencies within this specific field uh, does the golden fire and light wands energy stay with you for a certain while after taking it off does it entrain so for the golden fire and light wands or any of the tools yes once we start wearing these tools it is raising us up in frequency and vibration on the physical mental emotional spiritual and so these tools truly are training wheels to help us get to a space to where we can keep expanding our own selves in frequency and vibration so the the energy does 
does help to entrain your feel to it, the one that entrains the most is the golden fire and light or the, the golden fire coil. This is one that when you wear it, it is because it creates that torus, it is in training your feel to be in that, that torus flow as well. Um, so, but all the tools basically, because they're a quantum tool, like the golden fire and light wand, as the question is, um, you can actually use that without having the physical tool. It is a quantum tool. And if you go to the webinar on the golden fire and light wand, we actually teach you how to use that one. Um, and again, I'd refer you to the resources page on twistedsage.com because we do have a page called Light Anchoring. And that will walk you through a lot of the activations with the wands to where you don't even need a wand. But they're fantastic to have. They're handy to have around. Um, let's see. Christopher. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does your old three-inch-ish Twisted Sage stickers have an energy on our third floor plate anchored into the background picture. So Christopher got one of the, um, and I don't have one on this coffee cup, but Christopher got one of these um, twistedsage.com stickers from us that has a picture of a floor plate and some other tools all embedded within it. And he was asking if that carries those frequencies and properties. Yes, very much so. If you look at any of the pictures on our website or even on our physical publications like our business cards, our pamphlets, things like that, the energetics is embedded into all of the photographs, the videos, everything. We So when you go to look at a picture of a tool on the website, it is, this, it, it is the energetics of, of the tool and the physical um, it, that photo is that anchor for that quantum energy of that tool um, we actually have a lot of a lot of people who use the photos of the tools like the catalogs things like that we have a really wonderful feng shui master who uses our catalogs and she uses those in her grids um, because they they bring the energetics of the tools through um, so yeah the stickers and we just got a bunch of stickers coming here soon, Christopher. So we're going to start um, handing out stickers again. And these are will be our new newer logo, the one that's a lot more colorful. Um, Paige asks, I'm a targeted individual and have had harmful levels of electromagnetic frequencies directed at me for a while for some time. What would you recommend as a protocol to help block out these frequencies? There may be black magic attached to the frequencies as well. Thank you. So... You know, any time that we are receiving things, um, you know, we just had another question the other night about a gal who woke up that had, you know, entity attachments every morning. So basically, and it would be the same answer here, Paige, is it's, it's about shifting our frequency. It is about not, you know, not necessarily raising our self-frequency and vibration, which, yes, that helps, but shifting the fact of, shifting receiving any of that stuff so that's the same with so let me give you another roundabout with that curses so when people deal with curses they you have to accept those on some level for them to have any validity within your field there are the low level curses of people like intentions and thoughts and things like that you have to accept that into your field. There are things like family curses that come down through DNA, you know, hereditary things like that. And even that it is something that you have to go in and go back to it and it to the beginning where it came in to your ancestors and say, nope, we don't accept that, you know, it, uh -uh. and you know, so that's basically the same with anybody who, who feels that they have, you know, those, those other radionics and, and other things that come in that bombard them is that there is on a soul level, nothing can happen to us that our soul does not agree on. We are never powerless in anything that occurs to us. It is always there for soul growth lessons. But right now is the time to say, hey, Let's be done with this and let's step out of this soul growth lesson crap and let's get on with being creators. So part of that is 
becoming empowered. And that's really what we want our tools to do is to empower people so that you can stand up, stand in your light where you are untouchable, be in the heart space, radiate out into your field, talk with your soul and just be like, no, that's not, that's not what I'm accepting into my reality anymore. Change your field and what you accept. Um, that's that's kind of one of the big, and that's just a journey. It can be a journey. It can also be instantaneous. I've seen a lot of people change that whole reality instantaneously. Being in the heart space, working with your soul, working with your field, and shifting it, um, stepping out of it. Uh, what about gold-filled copper? So uh, the question is about using um, a, a gold filigree to make the tensor rings. And yes, I actually have a little tiny chunk of gold filigree that I do want to try to make a ring with someday, Christopher. Um, as it would be cheaper than, than pure gold. We just need to um, have the right equipment to, to be able to work with gold, the right torches, the right heat settings. Um, Bill asks, I have a golden fire wand. May it be used to heal bones or teeth? So, of course, our tools can't be used to actually heal anything. That is what, you know, we have to say. Um, I can say that I have seen... Okay, I can say that I know of people who have regenerated teeth and organs. One of our good friends, um, Ken Graydon, in Australia, um, Ken's a huge proponent of our tools. So Ken actually writes um, a book, Healing the Handbook, by Ken Graydon. So he uses consciousness, simple little processes, very simple, and there and in the Svet Center in Russia, um, people are growing back teeth and organs. Um, I believe it's a possibility, and I believe we can do it with consciousness work. Um, and the tools, the tools are just there to, to assist us. They, they, are, they are tools of consciousness work. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't like to put any limitations on what we as a human in this time and the tools together can't do. Um, Christopher asked if we're going to make a harmony heck of clasp. Mm, haven't thought about making another heck of clasp in harmony, but um, certainly would consider that. Uh, Jill, any tips on using Spooky 2 Rife machines, using rings over rem remote to boost it? Um, yeah, anytime you're dealing with radionics or, or frequency emitters, Rife machines, the Spooky 2, um, you know, which is a quantum field, anytime you use the, the tensor rings with these specific fields, these quantum fields from these devices, not only does it ensure that those devices are emitting a beneficial broadcast, but it amplifies them. We actually teach, um, I've, I'm part of a Masters with Radionics class here in Rapid City, South Dakota, just north of here. I've been with for five years. They've been going on for six years. And they are master radionic teachers from around the world. And we have people that come from around the world in October every year to take this class. So I work with Dr. Ron, and he's, um, he's one of the top radionics people in the world. And we've seen that when we put a tensor ring over the witness well or the broadcast, that where usually you would broadcast a radionics to clear a virus within a person, and it would take 20 minutes for that broadcast to, to work. You'd have to broadcast for 20 minutes. When you put a tensor ring over the witness well over or over your broadcast antenna, it takes it down to mere seconds that you need to broadcast. So with the Spooky 2, which is um, you know kind of like a Rife machine, yes, using the tensor fields is going to lessen your broadcast time and plus bring through the energetics of the rings along with it. So anytime you're using frequency devices, yeah, the rings are phenomenal with it. 
Um, and then Katrina asks, the tools are beyond time. Is that right? I tend to time travel in my consciousness of spirit. The tools would emit their energies in those and alter those timelines. Thanks for your support. So, yes, any time that we are doing the work, you know, like I was talking about before when we have family curses and we go back to the time when it was first received by our great, great, great grandfather, whatever. And we go to that specific point in time and we clear that time and then that moves forward and then we no longer have the curse. You know, the, the, the same energetic patterns are gone. And so that is something, yes, very much that um, if you are able to do that with consciousness and that's what healing in the handbook does, you know, they, they, you know, you, you go with your soul back in time, like let's say their, their cancer process, they go back in time. Your soul knows when to the point before you received that cancer or whatever and you go to that point and you do the work and then you bring it forward um so yeah well, we do that with consciousness work and you can certainly take the tools and do that same energy work with the tools um it's it's an interesting concept <laughs> this whole time thing is but yeah we, we it's a tangible concept um let's see Question about when we see Brenda. Man, that's a good question. Brenda's finally slowing down out there, so we might be able to see her one of these days. Um, going over to the chat now. Um, we've gone through all the questions. Um, Sylvia is asking, getting a message that says, unable to subscribe to stream in a reasonable amount of time. What does that mean? Man, Sylvia, I don't know. Um, she says she's seeing a black screen. Um, man, that is something that we're going to have to ask our computer guy about, Sylvia. Um, if you want to send a email to me, twistedsage at hotmail.com, um, I'll talk with our computer guy and see what we can find out. So let's see. Jane asks, what is a good tool for traveling besides our cell phone tab? Golden fire generators of any size. That's what I recommend for most people who are in a vehicle because it shifts everything as you drive. I mean, it, it, it clears land, it clears the people. It, you know, it, it's a great way to spread that energy um, and that field out. So the golden fire generator is one I suggest for when you're driving, but actually what comes to mind very first and foremost for you is the golden fire and light wand um because as you drive around you know if you drive cross country you drive by a water tower or an old funky looking building or a cemetery or a cell phone tower just hold up that wand and use it to anchor columns of light and then that is that really is the best one for you if you're just traveling cross country you want something to do get the golden fire and light wand and just use it to anchor columns of light everywhere you go. Um, but if you're talking about city travel, yeah, the Golden Fire Generator is a great one. Um, let's see. And Sylvia, I recently purchased the Golden Fire Pendant, and since I've been wearing it, I've been feeling hot all the time. Can you explain what could be happening? Yeah, there's with the golden fire field, there is a lot of people who do report the heat. Most people, that is because of the sacred heart, the trifold gold flame heart that becomes activated. And then also for others, that heat will come through. So it is different again for every person. But that heat, and you feel that within the body, just trust that that is all perfect and great. It is doing physical changes within your body. Um, yeah, so when you're using these tools and things happen, you, you know, just stick with it. If it becomes uncomfortable, breathe with it and just breathe if it ever becomes uncomfortable. And if it's not uncomfortable, then that's great. You definitely know it's doing something then. Um, so let's see. I'm just still reading through some chat here. 
Would the Golden Fire Generator make a good gift to help an elderly, anxious person, or would their anxiety interfere or disrupt the positive effects? No, actually, um, the Golden Fire Generator for for people that have um, anxiety, it's a great tool because the anxiety usually either comes from a disconnect with themselves, outside influence energy, internal stuff that's coming up for release, all of those things the Golden Fire Generator will assist with. So yeah, totally the Golden Fire Generator is, is a pretty subtle energy device to to give to anyone with with anxiety um let's see yeah. here's some there's some pretty awesome people that i haven't seen in some years on here so it is so good to see all you guys um sometimes i put the big tensor ring that goes over smart meters on my head thoughts it's just an intuitive thing also, there's a whole array of those things in our building I've been in, so I just put it at incoming wireless devices. Other thoughts. So the Shireya, the the rings that um, you got from us years and years ago, like the meter ring that you actually put around your electrical meter, we've swapped that up. Oh, shoot, I don't have my golden fire disc here i had to take it to the shop because we were running low on tools um we just use a small ring um the the golden fire disc that we use is it's this size of ring and it's flattened and it has the the resin in it and you stick it right onto your electrical panel and the way that the the tools are working now with these golden fire tools um because we've updated our tools so much over over the past years is that these golden fire tools now when you place them onto the electrical panel they will work with the consciousness of electricity they will follow that up all the way through your electrical system covering your meter as well so your smart meter transmissions are then covered within this coherent field. So it brings that coherency also to your smart meter transmissions. But as it also follows, that coherency follows up the line, it is working with all of the smart meters within your apartment complex or wherever. So basically when you put it onto your electrical panel door, it'll follow it all the way back to um, your green transformer box that sits somewhere outside in your local neighborhood. So it'll follow it all the way back up to that box and to all homes that are connected to that transformer box. So one single golden fire disc, you know, that two inch about size disc, this isn't it, this is the Wi-Fi ring, which you can use the Wi-Fi ring too, same exact ring. It's just that the two inch golden fire disc has a sticky back or a plug-in that you just put onto your electrical system and it will cover everybody's smart meters. Um, and then what does it mean that the regenerative heart pendant replaces the golden fire pendant? Oh, thank you for that. On our website, we have the um, regenerative heart pendant. So the regenerative heart pendant um, is our newest one that is basically this guy right here on a lanyard. We used to have a golden fire pendant and an inf and a 111 heart pendant both of those looked like this and in that golden fire pendant was one of our big sellers and they were both golden fire rings the golden fire infinity and the golden fire ring and when we first came out with the with the regenerative heart pendant we were redirecting that web page of the golden fire pendant to the regenerative heart pendant um so sharia that's that's what that means is that at the time when people were searching for the golden fire pendant and we were referring to this one we just had to let them know so now that that golden fire pendant is gone we need to just take that off the website and update it um let's see is it okay to listen to 666 hertz frequency as audio i don't know no clue i do know that when we played with red led lights that we found a 660 hertz megahertz LED light that was phenomenal for healing, but I don't know enough about the other frequencies. Um, 
Christopher asks, I have heard that the pineal is the seat of the soul, but also the heart of the soul. How do you see all this? With 144 soul aspects, is that our universal self? How do you see the multidimensional self, multi-universal self? So the heart is truly the seat of the soul. That is where our light is. That is where our connection to our soul is. When we use the pineal, that's like our communicator, our cell phone for the heart, for the soul. So the pineal is very much a part of that. It is, it is a communicator. That is our receptor. That's, you know, communications tower. The heart very much is the seat of the soul. That is where we see the soul's light. When we go to do the big work out there in the multiverse and we find these big, huge beings and we're, we're helping to step them out of the duality agreement, we go to their heart where we find their soul spark. So the heart is where we find the soul spark in any being that has soul spark. And that is where we work from. So yes, I would totally say that the heart is the seat of the soul. Um, but we are also seeing that, you know, I went through several years of chakra migrations that just about killed me every time. Three different years, always usually around December 11th, kind of wild. But um, these chakra migrations, um, we're bringing everything, all the lower chakras up. And, and it's interesting, like with the large hoops, you can run a large hoop around a person and you can feel where their chakras are at. And the first time I, I ran into this whole thing of the chakras not being the standard normal system within the human anatomy was my sister Brenda, because I got down right below her solar plexus and there was no chakras, you know, the major chakras. And I was like, what? And she's like, well, yeah, no. She's like, well, mine came up here. And then so the work that we've been do, doing recently with our friend Jeanette is working with the solar heart, which is where we're seeing that all major chakras are going to for the human is that it's, uh, it's between the heart and the solar plexus, the solar heart. And we've been playing with that a lot recently. And that is a very empowering thing to do is to work with that new chakra center. Um, chakras are different for everybody. Um, you know, that's something that Metatron's always said in the beginning is not to get too caught up on chakras. Um, let's see, any, ex any experience with your tensor products with Shungite? Yeah, actually, we put Shungite in our water coasters. Um, yeah, Shungite is fantastic with tensor rings. So you can use Shungite in your water, but Dances with Water has shown this too, that if you put Shungite directly in your water, it is, it's also an absorber, not only physically, but energetically. So if you take a Shungite tab and you put it on your phone, it is an absorber. It's a blocker. And so... And then if you have a piece of Shungite sitting out in your space or a pendant, you need to clear that thing energetically. You can clear it in all the different ways. Run light to it, a thought, set it out in the sun, salt water, a tensor ring. is the most phenomenal way to clear Shungite. Um, so, yeah. Um, a little while, Twisted Sage had some golden fire crown pieces that were made to be worn on your head. Yep, we used to have the golden fire crowns. Um, they were kind of a novelty tool. The golden fire crowns were they had a large infinity that would sit up here on the forehead, a larger one, and it would be a golden fire ring that went around. It's just they were kind of a novelty. They didn't fit everybody. They were something that wasn't any more powerful and potent than wearing a ring over your chest or in your pocket. Um, and we may we may play with that again sometime. There's there's a lot of tools on the back burners um, that, that we might revive on these days. Is there something you would put on the engine of a car? Um, yo, I, I don't know. There's, there, there are people who, who use rings and they swear that when they put a ring over their gas tank that they get better mileage. But when we look at it, we're not seeing that it is the ring or the tensor field that's doing anything to gas, but it is simply a placeholder for their uh, for their intentions. So it is 
yeah, a placeholder for their intentions. And so it is actually the person who is creating the better gas mileage for the car and not the tensor ring. Um, and that's kind of what I feel with the engine of the car too, is that, um, you know, if it's, if it's an electrical motor, yes, actually for, for electric electrical motors, um, we see, we've seen people, we've had reports of a guy who usually has a $600 a month electric bill and he uses the, the ring on his meter box or on his electrical panel. He lives on a, a ranch and um, he uses a lot of electrical motors for irrigation, things like that. He noticed that it brought a coherency to the electrical motors to where they only use half the amount of electricity a month. Um, so, you know, the tensor fields can bring a coherency to things. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not better at answering that question. Oh, yes, we can totally do a meditation for the solar heart today. All right, so it is that time because we ran into our hour. So let's do a solar heart meditation then. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while, actually. And then, too, I was wanting to do a meditation with you guys because, as most of you know, we've been using the pyramid as our space holder for that field of neutrality. And we've been jumping inside of the pyramid to bring in that field of neutrality. Well, there is a lot of the videos that we've done out there, too, that we walk you through just accessing that field of neutrality through the heart space, not using any of the tools because we don't need to use any of the tools. Um, but for some people, it's, it's really a great, a great thing, a space holder. Um, so let's walk into the sacred space of the heart, doing the Trinity breath, going into the heart space. Um, and then from there, we're going to ground into the earth. We're going to expand. And then we're going to bring in that field of neutrality, that field of universal peace. Um, so we'll do that process. And then from there, we're going to step into that um, solar heart. So let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you can close your eyes if you wish. And just put your attention onto your physical heart, your light from within the heart. Send your light straight down into the earth and connect with that light of Gaia, the, the heart of Mother Earth. And breathe that loving energy right up into your physical body. Next, connect your light to your soul, source, creator, God, the field of creation energy. Whatever that is, breathe in that energy into the heart. Now, the third breath, we breathe in both of those together within the heart and we expand them out after they're mixed. So then we are a calm of light. We are in the heart. We are connected with that energy of the earth. We are connected with that energy of source, soul, creation. And we are a conduit, a connecting point for the two. And as we stand as that calm of light, bring your attention back to your heart, that gold and fiery heart. Imagine your soul standing before you, however your soul presents. I usually see it as just this big golden being and your soul from within the sacred space is going to put its hand on your heart and activate that sacred heart. So taking that golden fire from your heart and bringing that up to your throat, and then bringing that right up to your pineal gland, right in the middle of the brain, and setting your pineal gland on fire. 
Now let's witness these infinities, the figure eight on its side that go right through the pineal and they're connecting the left and right brain hemisphere. Just connecting, connecting all the way through. Now that infinity goes upwards and connects to your higher mind, to your quantum mind. As it connects to that quantum mind, that is where we find that field of universal peace. Just allow that field of universal peace to come down through the body, through every cell. And then going back up to that field of universal peace, and we're going to step beyond there, beyond the mind, into that field of all knowing. And we're going to step beyond that into that field of neutrality. So as we step into that field of neutrality, and we just allow that to come down into our physical body, but we stay here in that field of neutrality at the same time. But just allowing it to flow into you. Allowing that to shift your physical body, that field of neutrality. Here we exist in all of these planes. In our physical here is that again, that conduit to the earth, to our lives. All right, now then, as you are all of that, start imagining your solar plexus, that golden core of your solar plexus. And then imagining that golden heart, that radiant golden heart of yours. Now imagine meeting them right in between to that solar heart and it's magnetic. It draws in all those higher energies, the higher energies of the field of peace, the field of neutrality, that golden light creation energy. And as you are drawing all that in your body, you might just feel that within every cell, just becoming electrified. It is all good. Just keep breathing with it. Just keep your attention focused there on that solar heart. As it's just drawing all those energies in. Okay, now let's start to harmonize them. We are great harmonizers, our field is, especially when we are in that field of neutrality. Harmony is an aspect of the field of neutrality. So just ask that your field is harmonized. You, your soul, the consciousness of this light, it'll do the work. And if you need to go outside after this and lay on the ground and let the earth harmonize all of your electrical fields, please do so. All right, we will leave it there. Please do continue to play with this. 
you lay in bed at night, just go into the heart space, connect to the earth, connect to creation, your soul. And then just use that imagination to create that solar heart, that magnetic energy, that gold and light energy of the solar plexus in the heart and draw in those fields of neutrality, of universal peace and of harmony. Awesome. Till next time.